Who were the Carolingians and what the Carolingian dynasty was? The Carolingian dynasty was a Frankish noble family named after the member Charles Magna. The dynasty takes its name from the word Carolus, which is the Latin name of Charles Martel, who was the de facto ruler of Francia from 718 AD until his death in 741 AD. The word Carolingian itself translates to descendant of Charles, meaning from the family of Charles. Beginning of lineage, the Carolingian family began with the first two important Frankish families in the face of Pippinids and the Arnuflings. People from both the clans came from noble backgrounds on the western borders of the Austrasia territory between the Mayus and Moselle rivers, north of Liège. Pippin I. The first significant figure in this family was Pippin I of Landen and Arnuf of Metz. The two had their destinies interlinked and wed their children with Pippin's daughter, Bega, marrying Arnuf's son, Ens Geisel. Pippin has then rewarded the position of Mayor of the Palace of Austrasia in 624 AD, and this position brought a lot of fame and importance for Pippin. During this time, the Mayor of the Palace was regarded as the most important non-royal person in the kingdom. Once he was elected, Pippin served under Clotar, who was king very faithfully until Clotar died in 629 AD. Following King Dagobert's ascension to the throne in 629 AD, Pippin lost his position as mayor and the support of rich and powerful Austrasian men who were their backers in the society. With further controversy surrounding his name during the reign of Dagobert, Pippin didn't appear in any historical record from that time onwards until Dagobert died in 638 AD. After the king's death, Pippin had miraculously got his position of mayor back but he could only have it for a short while, as he died unexpectedly in the year 640 AD. Grim Oald, following the uncertain death of Pippin, his grandson Grim Oald looked to stabilize the family and once again obtain a solid position in their society. Since the mayor of the palace wasn't one that could be passed on from generation to generation, it was given to Otto, the tutor of Sigbert III. Grim Oald began conspiring with his father's accomplice, Cunibert, to get Otto removed from the office. His efforts finally came to fruition when Otto was killed under the orders of Cunibert. Grimoald then became the mayor of Austrasia, and his power during this time was extensive and far-fetched, so much that he began to be called the ruler of the realm by people. The reason for Grimoald's success was his securing the undivided support of Sigbert III. Since Grimoald had such a firm footing with the strongest people in the country backing him, he began to build power for the Pippin clan. He managed to gain control over holy men and women, who in turn supported his assertions of power where he wanted to do so. Grimoald also established strong links with missionaries of different regions. One of the most notable moments from the life of Grimoald is disputed in both date and event known as Grimoald's Coup. In it, Grimoald and his son, Childebert, the adopted, took the Austrasian throne from the true Merovingian King Dagobert II, son of the late Sigebert, who died young at 26 years old. Childebert was then made the Austrasian king, after which he lured his adoptive father Grimoald into a trap where he executed him, thus bringing the supremacy of Grimoald to an end. Pippin II We might not know much about the life of Pippin II. Still, it was heard by many credible sources that Pippin reclaimed power in Austrasia by killing a legendary Gunduin as revenge for the assassination of this father and Sajazel. Pippin II's rise to power was shown off when he rose against a tyrannical ruler called Ebroin, who was mayor of Austrasia. Pippin gathered an army against him and quickly managed to defeat him. Pippin then received in Ermenfred, an officer of a royal treasury who had assassinated Ebroin. With Ebroin dead, Warado was made the mayor of Neustria and looked to keep peace in the region with Austrasia. The death of Warato moved the entire landscape of the area in political terms, and Warato's son, Burchar, was made the mayor of Neustria. Burchar, however, could not keep the peace between the regions and incited Pippin into violence. Pippin refused to stay quiet and rallied an Austrasian army against Neustria, being led by Burchar. Even though Pippin II offered peace at first, it was rejected by Burchar. Little did Burchar know that there was a surprise waiting for him on the battlefield, where Pippin and his army's surprise attack caught the Neustrians off guard and caused them to flee. Upon reaching his final years, Pippin's sons, Drogo and Grimoald, both died. Pippin II died in December 714. 
Charles Martel After the death of Pippin II came Charles Martel, where the year 714 was the first time he was mentioned in records. In his first battle facing the Neustrians, Martel had a staggering victory. He ambushed a returning party at the Battle of Amblieve and was victorious. He and his army managed to inflict heavy losses on the Neustrian invaders. Then in the year 717 AD, Charles gathered his army again and marched for Neustria once again, where he managed to take the city of Verdun during the conquest. He was victorious once again, forcing the Neustrian army to retreat to Paris. He swiftly returned to Austrasia and besieged Cologne, defeating Plectrude and reclaiming his father's wealth and treasure. Due to Charles' military successes, he won the support of many influential people, including the support of embassies, dukes, and several political players, which caused his position to be strengthened in his circle. When King Clotar IV died in 719, Charles became the primary ruling authority in Francia. After Chilperic died in 720 AD, the crown was restored with complete Carolingian control after Charles became the mayor of the palace in both Neustria and Austrasia. When Charles came into power, some of the most significant events in Frankish history took place. The civil unrest between 714 and 721 had destroyed the continental political cohesion, and peripheral kingdoms like Aquitaine, Alemania, Burgundy, and Bavaria had slipped from the Carolingians' grasp. Even though the faction had by Charles Martel's time established solid political control over Francia, loyalty within these border regions remained to the Merovingian power and not the new political forces. Martel even united Neustria and Austrasia, bringing the civil war in the two areas to an end. When King Therudic IV died in 737 AD, Charles did not install a Merovingian successor, since he did not rely on them. Since he did not have anybody he could count on, Charles ruled as the prince, where he officially gained the title of his uncontested leadership upon acquiring province in 737 AD. Charles died in 741 AD, where he was buried in Saint Denis in Paris. Charles Magna Moving on to the greatest Carolingian ruler in their clan, Charles Magna was the person who took this dynasty to the next step. He was the one who managed to put it on the map. Charles Magna was crowned emperor by Pope Leo III at Rome in 800. His empire was more or less a continuation of the Western Roman Empire and is referred to as the Carolingian Empire. The Carolingian rulers still kept their practice of dividing their inheritance among their heirs, and the concept of indivisibility of the empire was also accepted. The Carolingians maintained an exercise where they would make their sons kings in less critical areas of their empire, which they would get to inherit upon their father's deaths. Charles Magna and his son Louis the Pios both did for their respective sons. Charles Magna extended Frankish power due to the conquest over all of Gaul, Germany, and Italy, and managed to establish tributaries of the European districts of Bohemia, Serbia, and Croatia. Charles Magna allied with the Papacy in 774 AD and created a papal state in central Italy. On Christmas Day of 800, in the presence of Pope Leo III, he is crowned emperor of the restored Roman Empire. Charles Magna was the ruler who united most of Western Europe for the first time since the Roman Empire. He then successfully led a series of campaigns throughout his reign to unite most of Western Europe under a single emperor. With religion being a dividing factor in the Carolingian Empire, Charles Magna played a vital role in spreading Christianity. Through his religious reforms, he strengthened what was taught at church, educated the higher people to go on and educate the masses, and improved their skills of liturgical practices. Charles Magna put an end to the money system based on the gold standard, since the region was facing a shortage. Instead, he established a new standard based upon a pound of silver. It was a master stroke by the man, because it was a unit of both money and weight. The standardization of currency made trade easier and helped the continent to flourish in terms of economy. The money system based on silver put in place by Charles Magna is now a model adopted by many of Europe's most prosperous countries, such as the British, Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese. Due to Charles Magna's efforts, classical literature was preserved, and importance was given to manuscripts that promoted the culture of the Carolingian dynasty. The earliest scriptures available for many ancient texts have managed to survive due to the daunting efforts of Charles Magna. A text that survived till the Carolingian Renaissance is probably still in existence. Decline After Charles Magna died in 814 AD, the Carolingian dynasty slowly began to wither away. The kingdom which he kept together by his will slowly began to break away 
splitting into three parts and each of them being ruled over by one of these grandsons. Only the Western and Eastern Kingdoms survived, where they would go on and become known as the countries Germany and France. The remaining Carolingians ruled in East Francia until 911 and held the throne of West Francia until 987 AD. The end of the Carolingian rule is marked when the start of the Capetian dynasty is told. The Carolingian dynasty became extinct with the death of the last male heir, Eudes, the Count of Vermandois. The entire family finally ended in 1122, when the last Carolingian, Adelaide, passed away. The Carolingian dynasty had several moments of success during its golden years. Many rulers tried to bring stability to the dynasty, but couldn't keep it around for long. The most stable period in this dynasty is undoubtedly that of Charles Magna, where his significant reforms proved to be a game changer for this dynasty. Had he stuck around for a longer time, the dynasty would have survived even more. But as they say, nothing is meant to last forever, and the Carolingian dynasty had its time set out for it since its first day.